Hello, it's Cried here with a breakdown for the seven crossbows and two ballistae in Elden Ring. That's right, the plural form of ballista is ballistae and not ballistas. But you're probably not here for the English lesson. These two types of weapons are grouped together because they share many similarities. The biggest difference between these two weapon types and all the other weapon types in Elden Ring is that they don't scale to your stats. Yep, as long as you have enough stat requirements for the weapons in either of these two categories, you will be doing the same amount of damage if you have the same upgrade level and ammo. 99 strength or 99 dexterity does not matter in the least bit. First, let us begin by talking about crossbows. One big difference between bows and crossbows is that crossbows can be held and fired with one hand. While you must load your crossbow before every shot, this allows you a way to quickly do range damage if you already have the bolt loaded. You do have to find time to reload after every shot, but you can do this when you're a safe distance off. Furthermore, the bolt is consumed upon firing and not loading, which means that you can decide which arrow to fire after you've already loaded it. However, holding the crossbow on your offhand does come at a cost. Your Ash of War will be replaced with shooting the secondary bolt type. This is a huge issue if you often use your main hand Ash of War, as it becomes much clunkier to use, since you will have to two-hand the weapon. Next, before we talk about the individual crossbows, we're going to take a look at the bolts, or the ammunition of crossbows. Like my bow video, I divided the ammo up into pure physical, elemental, and status bolts. The first thing you will notice is that there are no special bolts that do more poise damage. All bolts do 20 poise damage in PvP, which is 2 poise damage in PvE. Arrows and bolts are also shafted by the poise changes, so they don't receive a 1.35 times multiplier to poise damage dealt in PvP, despite not being a weapon art. With the poise of armor getting increased a few patches ago, this is essentially a nerf to arrows and bolts. Another thing I want to draw your attention towards is bone bolts and regular bolts. Bone bolts are essentially unfledged arrows, so they have a shorter max flying range, which also means that their damage drop off happens faster. For any bolt that has a bone and non-bone version, the non-bone version is always stronger. Even their attack is higher. This point also leads to my labeling. Not considering acquisition, if the arrows are labeled red, it means that another arrow is definitely better off. If the bolt is better than the bone bolt, why is it also labeled red? That is because Lord Sworn's bolt exists, which is an outright stronger version of the regular bolt. Green labels are the ones that are best of their kind. However, do remember that this does not include acquisition. Bolts are very easy to come by. A few stacks of these would only cost you some runes, whereas the Lord Sworn's bolt must be farmed. So, if you're not on PC with ways to easily acquire ammo, you will need to take this into consideration too. Two bolts I want to highlight are the Explosive Bolt and Perfumer's Bolt. Both of these bolts produce explosions on contact. However, the Explosive Bolt's explosion is far bigger than the Perfumer Bolt's. But the Perfumer Bolt can be buffed with the Perfumer Talisman, which will increase the total damage of the bolt shot by 20%. The shots can also be buffed by Arrow Sting Talisman, and this is one of the ways to achieve some of the highest damage you can deal with crossbows. The only shame to crossbows is that they do not scale and fall off in damage comparatively the higher your level is. The other bolts I want to highlight are the status effect bolts. Now, these bolts aren't special on their own. However, the most famous crossbow, the Pulley Crossbow, it's great at utilizing status arrows because you fire 3 shots in a single volley. For the crossbows ordered from lightest to heaviest, we have the soldier's crossbow, full moon crossbow, pulley crossbow, light crossbow, crepus's black key crossbow, heavy crossbow, and arbalest. I just find it amazing that FromSoft named the weapon light crossbow and it isn't the lightest, and they named the crossbow heavy crossbow without it being the heaviest either. I guess that's why they're not called lightest crossbow or heaviest crossbow. Anyways, amongst the list, the exceptionally different ones are the full moon crossbow, which has base magic damage, the pulley crossbow, 
which fires three bolts at a time, and the Crepus's Black Key Crossbow, which has a slight bonus range. Although, this range effect really isn't that big. The Crepus's is labeled as 47 range instead of 42 range. If we order them from lightest to heaviest and check out their attack, this is the list. Let's ignore the full moon and the pulley for a second. We'll talk about them soon enough. This is the new list. You will immediately notice that, other than the black key crossbow, all the other crossbows have higher attack the heavier they are. I want to get this crossbow out of the way first. I don't recommend it even for the shorter ranged bone arrows because outright having less attack also means less damage. The slightly longer range really isn't worth it in my opinion. I personally don't think you'll often fire crossbows at very long ranges, and you have quite a bit of range on the non-bone bolts already. Switching from a bone bolt to a non-bone bolt helps with the range many more times than swapping from a regular crossbow to the crepuses. It's going to be very rare for the additional range to matter, so I don't recommend using the crepuses as it just naturally has less damage. It is one of the best looking crossbows though. With the crepuses eliminated, we have the list narrowed down to 4 crossbows. Honestly, you can think of them as the same crossbow. The only difference is the weight and the attack. So which one should you pick? These are the gaps between their weight, and these are the gaps between their AR. Even the 1.5 extra weight is worth trading for 28 AR, as there are no other options to scale crossbow damage. If you just want to fire bolts to lure mobs, I guess you can take the light crossbow, but honestly for 2 more weight, I'd just take the arbalest. This is definitely the best option out of the 4, considering the amount of extra damage you would be doing per ammo. The endurance cost is more than worth it. Furthermore, although it is quite well hidden, the arbalest is actually available early on in the game. This is what you want, because there is a limited time period where crossbows are good, since they don't scale. This makes them struggle to be effective as you move into higher NG pluses. Back to the full moon crossbow. How does this crossbow compare to the arbalest? If we take a look at their total AR, the full moon crossbow has higher AR. However, just like other weapon types, higher AR does not necessarily mean higher damage because of defense and split damage types. If we're using the Lord Soren's bolt for both of these crossbows, arbalest deals more total damage. But what if we're using a split damage type arrow, the Meteor Bolt to be more specific, as this already deals magic damage. This would be the total AR for the two crossbows, which would lead to these numbers instead. If we tally the damage up, Full Moon Crossbow now deals more damage than the Arbalest. And even if we replace the Arbalest's arrow with Lord Sworn's Bolt, which is stronger for the Arbalest, the Full Moon Crossbow still ends up doing more total damage. Furthermore, Arbalest won't do any better with any of the other elemental bolts unless the enemy is specifically weak to a damage type. For some reason, the Meteor Bolt already has 5 higher physical attack than any of the other elemental bolts. Even in a PvP setting, the Full Moon Crossbow with the Meteor Bolt will outperform the Arbalest with a Meteor Bolt. As for using the Lord Swords for the Arbalest, you will still have less total damage than the Full Moon Crossbow. But one advantage of this is that the physical damage is pierce damage, which can benefit from counter hits. The full moon crossbow is two weights lighter though. Overall, this is definitely the best crossbow for split damage type with meteor bolts, while the arbalest is best with the lord's horns or either of the explosive bolts if you want to trade damage for the AoE or something like PvP. The explosive bolts won't work well with the full moon crossbow, as they would split the damage type three ways. And once again, I would only recommend the Perfumer's Bolt if you're running the Perfumer's Talisman. Oh yeah, and just in case you're wondering about Lightning Bolts, because Lightning Defense is the lowest for PvP, here are the numbers. Totaling up the damage, the Lightning Bolt still ends up doing less than the Lord Swords on the Arbalest, because the arrow damage is really too low. The tiny amount of lightning attack really gets butchered by split damage type issues, so I would generally stick to the Lord Swords. The only exception is in watery areas where the lightning bolts can produce an AoE, while enemies also have their lightning negation lowered due to being wet. 
As for the final crossbow, the pulley crossbow is probably the most famous crossbow in Elden Ring because of its ability to fire off 3 shots in a single salvo. It does take 3 times the ammo consumption though, so it is quite costly. For those not on PC or without an infinite supply of ammo, this can be an annoying upkeep. You run the status bolts with the pulley crossbow, because the status damage is not reduced while it has a lower AR, meaning that the damage per shot is going to be very low. The obvious ones are the sleep bone bolts, which are incredibly powerful in PvP. The bird bolts are great for stacking bleed. And the last one I really want to highlight is the black key bolt for Scarlet's Rot. Scarlet's Rot has fewer sources than the other status effects. And black key bolt with pulley crossbow is one of the best ways to apply it if you're trying to make a Scarlet's Rot build work without just relying on the Rot spread. As for the Ballisti, this is easy since there are only two. And you've probably seen a few invasion videos yourself. People often run the Jar Cannon over the Hand Ballista because it has higher damage potential. But let's take a look at the Great Bolts first. There are only 4 of them, so it is fairly easy to decide. For the most part, your focus is likely going to be using the Explosive Great Bolt because of its explosion. This helps you catch AFKers and also hits moving targets much easier. But both the Ballista Bolt and Lightning Great Bolt still do more damage if you're sure you're going to hit something like an unmoving target. These are their attacks. The Jar Cannon has a higher AR. The main difference is their weight, with the Jar Cannon weighing 15 instead of the Hand Ballista's 10. The other difference is their strength requirement. Because you can only fire these weapons two-handed, the actual strength requirement is 20 and 23. Obviously, it is easier to meet the Hand Ballista's requirement if you're not a strength build, so that might be a point of contention. But if you have enough strength, the Jar Cannon definitely deals more damage. One final section before I do the summary. I have to say, I personally don't understand why these weapons don't scale to stats. An argument I heard is that it doesn't matter who holds a gun, a bullet is going to be just as strong, so stat investment shouldn't matter. I mean, that's one way to look at it, but even using a gun takes skill. Anyone can fire a gun, but can everyone with a gun do this? I don't think so. It really is a shame, because it's not like crossbows are particularly strong when you're low on stats, and they end up doing quite poor damage for endgame PvE compared to other ranged damage sources like spells, even though there is still an ammo cost to consider. I'm hoping From Software can do something about this in the DLC. Now let's do a quick summary. The pulley crossbow uses ammo at 3 times the speed, but it is, hands down, the best status application crossbow available to you as you shoot 3 bolts in one volley. The Full Moon crossbow has one of the highest damage potential for crossbows with the Meteor Bolt or even the weaker Magic Bone Bolt. Otherwise, Pick up the Arbalest with the Lord Sworn's Bolt for pure physical damage, or Explosive Bolt for the AoE. The Perfumer's Bolt also has a high damage potential, because it can be paired with the Perfumer's Talisman. Only run the Perfumer's Bolt if you're going to run the Perfumer's Talisman, or else it is strictly outperformed by the Explosive Bolt. As for the Ballisti, use the Jar Cannon if you can meet its requirements, or the Hand Ballista if you want lower strength and weight requirements. If you want to support my work, please consider buying my fantasy novel or donating to my Patreon down below. With a book purchase, you can also request a topic from me. Krite, signing out.